Welcome to the Rule Dictator. My name is Corlith, your host, and this is how to play Boss Monster. Boss Monster is a fast-paced card game of dungeon building. You score by luring heroes to your dungeon and killing them. Boss Monster is packed with nostalgic references to 8-bit video games, dungeon crawling RPGs, and geeky pop culture. Players compete to become the ultimate villain, the final boss at the end of a side-scrolling dungeon. Your challenges are many. First off, you have competition. Other bosses are also trying to attract heroes and score off them. You also need to strike a balance between making the dungeon enticing enough to get the attention of many heroes, while also being strong enough to kill them before they make it to your lair and wounding your boss. The first boss to score 10 points and souls without taking 5 wounds is the winner. A game usually takes between 15 to 20 minutes and is designed for 2 to 4 players. Here are the cards you will be using in Boss Monster. Bosses, obviously. Rooms, both standard and advanced. Spells. And heroes, both regular and epic. Boss cards have these items. Instructions for when the boss levels up, which occurs the first time the boss builds the fifth room in his dungeon. The boss's XP value, which is used to decide who goes first and to break ties. And its treasure type, which is used to lure heroes. Room cards have the room category. Watch for the word advanced, as those rooms can only be built on top of other rooms. Abilities. Damage values, which affect a hero every time it enters the room. And treasure types, that also help with luring the heroes. Spells are powerful effects that can be cast during certain phases. You can cast a spell during the build phase if the card has the hammer icon. The axe is for the adventure phase. Hero cards, both regular and epic, all follow these rules. This is the type of treasure that lures him. This is the amount of damage required to kill him. These icons are used during game setup to decide if this card is to be included in the hero draw pile. More about that in a moment. If the hero makes it all the way to your boss's lair, this is how much damage he inflicts. When the hero is defeated before getting to the boss, flip the card over. These tell you how many souls the hero is worth. Setup is a snap. The number of cards in the hero and epic hero decks depend on the number of players. In a two player game, remove the cards with a three or four player icon. For three players, the four player icon cards come out and with four players, use all of the heroes. Make two draw piles, one for the regular heroes and the second for the epic ones. Shuffle the room and spell cards and place them in separate draw piles. Shuffle the boss cards and give one to each player. Each player makes an initial hand by drawing five rooms and two spells. Of these seven cards, discard two face down. Once everyone is discarded, flip them over and put them into the discard pile. Build your first room by taking a regular room card and placing it face down in front of you. Everyone reveals what they built at the same time and execute any effects that the room triggers. In the case where abilities conflict, the room belonging to the boss with the highest XP goes first. Each round is broken into these phases. Start of turn, build, bait, adventure, and end of turn. At the start of each turn, heroes arrive in town. Draw one hero per player and place them in town in the order they arrived. Don't draw from the epic hero deck until the regular deck has run out. Each player also draws a card from the room deck and adds it to his hand. It is time to either build a new room or spruce up an existing one. During this phase, everyone gets to build, at most, one room. Here's how it works. Starting with the boss with the most XP and going in descending XP order, take a turn making each player active. The active player takes a room from his hand and either places it, face down, to the left of his leftmost room, or on top of one of the existing rooms. When adding a new extension to your dungeon, only regular cards may be used. When renovating an existing room, you may use a regular room or an advanced room. When placing an advanced room, at least one of its treasure types must match the room it is replacing. You may then place spells and use abilities that have the hammer icon. Once everyone has had a chance to build, the face-down cards are flipped over at the same time, 
They are now built, and any When You Build This Room abilities take effect. In the event that two abilities conflict, the room belonging to the boss with the highest XP triggers first. The first time you build the fifth room to your dungeon, your boss levels up. Execute his level up instructions. A boss only levels up once. If a room is destroyed, the boss does not level up again when it is rebuilt. Note that a dungeon may not have more than five rooms. From this point on, unless you're rebuilding a destroyed room, you will only be upgrading existing ones. During this phase, heroes are lured to the dungeons. Do the following for each hero in town. Count the number of treasure icons that correspond to the hero in question. Add modifiers from room abilities and spells. The dungeon with the highest relevant treasure lures the hero. Move that hero next to the entrance of the dungeon that caught his eye. If the treasure type the hero is looking for is tied, or there is no dungeon that is treasure he is looking for, he stays in town. This could lead to an interesting pileup of heroes if this happens over several rounds. If multiple heroes move to the same dungeon, they line up in the order they arrived. Now that there are heroes knocking on your door, it's time to let them have it, uh, I mean let them in. Take turns, going around the table in clockwise order, dealing with the heroes. As usual, the boss with the most XP goes first and becomes the active player. The hero closest to his entrance goes in. Apply damage for each room he passes through. If the hero is killed before he gets to your boss, flip his card and place it in your soul pile. If he survives, he goes face up into your wound pile. You are also allowed to use spells during this phase, but they must have the axe icon. Once that hero has been dealt with, the next player becomes active and he deals with the hero closest to his entrance. Keep going around the table, taking turns until every hero has been dealt with. Note, if a room has been destroyed or rendered inactive, a hero simply jumps over it and goes to the next room in the chain. Resolve all end of turn effects. Check to see if any boss has been eliminated. Five wounds and that boss is out. Next, check to see if any of the surviving bosses have won. It takes 10 souls to win. If there are no victors and at least two bosses survive, reactivate all the rooms that have been turned on their side and start a new round. Note that any heroes that were sent back to the beginning of the dungeon or back to town by an effect are fully healed, so there is no need to keep track of them between rounds. And that's it. Boss Monster is fun, fast, and suitable for players of all ages. Check out the Boss Monster website at bossmonstergame.wordpress.com for more information. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.